And intercropping is one of those aspects that really allows uh, a missing hole in organic. My name is Bryce Earlbeck and we're out here in Western Iowa, specifically Manning, Iowa on B&B Earlbeck Farms. I'm an owner and operator with the rest of my family and we're standing in a canola field, a canola and intercrop pea field right now that we're about a week away from swathing and harvesting that we'll see later in the video. Intercropping is not a new idea. It's a new idea uh, for large-scale Midwest farms, but it's been done around the world and specifically Canada. That's where I got a lot of my ideas and data from. So it's not a new idea. Uh, there's organic farmers that have been doing it. We're just trying to take it to the next level and do it at scale. Biodiversity is one of the most important aspects of organic farming. Uh, it allows us to make management decisions and allows us to keep weeds at control. And the way we do that with intercropping is we plant two crops at once, which they work together synergistically. Peas can, uh, create nitrogen, canola uh, uses nitrogen, so we don't use a lot of fertilizer. And then they, they grow together, keeping down the weeds as best as possible, and are harvested at the same time, creating the biodiversity not only uh, in the soil, but on top of the soil as well, working together. And then creating that synergistic effect in the soil of not just having corn and soybeans anymore. We're, we're getting corn and soybeans, we're getting two more crops in that rotation. Really, we have a lot of tools at our service. They're just different tools than what a conventional farmer might use or leverage as they're going through their farm planning. Intercropping is a very interesting thing and it can really hit several different objectives and goals. Weed management is one that might be leveraged if you're wanting to intercrop, management of your overall field, increasing biodiversity, and also just getting um, a better crop rotation cycle. As you can see here, this is tangled together with the canola and that's what we're going for. Number one, to, to keep the weeds down as much as possible. And number two, harvesting it makes it a lot easier when it's entangled, taking it into the combine, as well as uh, harvestability. So you can see this is a tangled mess. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for in the inner crop. So we go through our farm, we'll see we have all these crops happening at different times that allows us to uh, disperse our management over more months rather than try to fit it all in the same month. We knew corn and soybeans are gonna have to uh, take a lot of management in that May, June timeframe. So we pushed our canola and peas back to April to get them in, and then we start managing them again in July. So we really changed that time frame between corn and soybeans when we had all this management, which has allowed us to be more effective on those corn and soybean acres, as well as have more acres in our rotation. One of the considerations when deciding to do intercropping uh, on your farm is, how do I select seeds? It's taken us at B&B Earlbeck Farms and AgriSecure as a collaborative group two to three years to really figure that out and where we should be for our farm. So it's not the same on every farm, every region, but you have to do the planning well in advance because most likely if you're sitting lower Midwest, you're not going to have that seed in a warehouse. It's not going to be close to you. We shipped ours in from South Dakota, took a bunch of research uh, to understand the different varieties of can canola because it's like winter and spring wheat and, and the, these different varieties. And then matching up, that up to a pea maturing, having that all come together at once is, takes a lot of research and understanding for specific region, regions and specific farms. Thinking about the entire process that has to go on during the year to grow and harvest peas and canola, it starts way back in March. Uh, we get the planter set up and, and we go through the, the so we, we have a drill that's 30 foot that plants on seven and a half inches. We get that set up for two seeds, a small seed and a big seed canola and peas. We come in about April 1st and we work the field. We don't want to get it really fluffy because we won't, don't want peas all over the, or seed depths all over. But we come in and we work it light with the vertical till, take the, take the lumps out, get it flat. We come in with the drill and we'll plant the peas and canola. And some unique things that we have to consider when doing the drilling is we have to treat the peas. And so we have a special uh, seed tender that treats it as it comes into the drill. And then as we go through the season, we don't have much management. One thing that we could possibly do is fungicide if we have a lot of rains. Uh, we didn't do it this year, but it's definitely an option that we could if, if we needed to be. And we're doing trials with that as well to see if it makes a big difference. Uh, and then we get into the next hard part that we've took, it's taken us quite a while to learn, but uh, here in about a week, and it's about July 1st right now, 
And here in a week to five days, we will come through and we will come and cl clean swath this with a swather, 30 foot head on a Heston that will put it into windrows. And we bought a pickup header that will come in in about three to four days after that, pick it up, put it in the combine, we'll put it in a truck and take it to our bin site. And another unique feature is that we're gonna separate that seed at the bin site. So we have a separator that will take canola one way, peas another way into a bin, and we cannot leave them together at night otherwise they'll form a solid mass inside the truck so make sure you don't do that. Those are just a couple of unique features that we've seen through production of canola and peas intercrop together highlighting a few of the key parts. One of the things that we had to think about before we even considered buying all the equipment and doing this rotation is where are we going to market this crop and all the other crops that could be intercropped. It's not a corn and soybean market where you can wake up tomorrow and, and make a sale and move that crop. And so one of the things that we recommend highly before trying any of this is to know where your market is. It doesn't have to be 100% locked down, but have that offtake that you know you're gonna work with somebody. We, we work with companies that understand that we don't exactly have everything down to a T, but they're willing to write us contracts to get the, the offtakes and work with us on bushel wise and not lock us down to having X amount of bushels. So those are the things that you really have to think about before you go into production, not, not just the infield activities. So when thinking about doing something as new as intercropping peas and canola, uh, one thing we, I always go back to is AgriSecure. Uh, we think about doing all these different things from rolling soybeans to intercropping to alfalfa and how all these rotations fit, fit together. Uh, conventional, if we think about it, we have a lot of those answers. The universities have been able to do a ton of research and it's, it's all over the internet. If I want to learn about conventional, I can go do that. We don't have that in organic, and that's one thing AgriSecure brings, is we have all these great ideas, but the level of tracking and traceability, not from a financial standpoint, but from a management standpoint as well, being able to understand that, bring that back to real life, and understand what works and what doesn't work, has been one of the important parts of AgriSecure played in us doing the intercropping here, and a lot of our customers that we work with, them deciding what rotation to go with. Just doing something and putting it on 40 acres and saying it works because it worked in my head with the mathematics doesn't mean it works. So getting it out, getting it down on paper, going through that with more than one person has been a great experience.